Hey everyone, this lesson is specifically on how we can do a clinical examination for a scaphoid fracture. So a scaphoid fracture generally occurs with a fall on outstretched hand or what we call a foosh injury. So if you see anybody with a foosh injury, it's important to rule out a scaphoid fracture because of the risk of avascular necrosis. So how do we do that? How do we actually assess for a scaphoid fracture? So if we were to take a look here at my hand, we can see that if I stretch out my hand like this, we can see that there are two tendons. There is the extensor pollicis longus tendon here, and we have the extensor pollicis brevis tendon here. So this here is the anatomic snuff box. That's what we call the anatomic snuff box. So with a scaphoid fracture, if we were to put pressure and palpate in the anatomic snuff box, you're going to get focal tenderness. That's going to indicate a possibility of a scaphoid fracture. There are other locations where we can actually assess for a scaphoid fracture. The other one is the volar prominence at the distal wrist here. So if we were to look at the volar prominence here, right around the distal area of the wrist, if we were to actually palpate this area, there may also be focal tenderness as well with a scaphoid fracture. So those are a couple of sites to assess for a scaphoid fracture. It's important to recognize again because of the risk of avascular necrosis. So if, if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell for more lessons like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.